Hi everyone and welcome to a very special live streamed discussion of the new ThoughtWorks technology radar. Um, if you've been living under a rock somewhere and don't know what the tech radar is, we're going to talk about that and, and tell you. Um, and we're also going to cover uh, how we come up with the radar, what it is, um, and go over some of the themes on it. Um, I'm joined today uh, by two guests. Uh, I've got Graham Brooks, who is the market technical principal for uh, North America East. How are you doing today, Graham? I'm doing well, thank you, Mike. And I'm also joined by Pete Hodgson, who's um, a developer and tech lead. Uh, which office do you work out of, Pete? San Francisco, despite my accent. San Francisco, and we are 100% silly accents today. Um, that, was a, <laughs> that was a goal of getting these people involved. Um, and uh, Pete has a lot of experience with some of the cutting edge mobile work that we do. Um, so yeah, so briefly today we're gonna we're gonna talk about a uh, brief history of the radar. Uh, we're gonna run through some of the trends uh, that we're seeing on the radar, um, and if we've got time, we'll do a little run through of the quadrants. We're kind of uh, we're kind of trying to answer the question about whether we're doing enough cool work, um, and. Uh, as a part of that discussion, we, we came up with this list of hot technologies that we thought was a, you know, kind of a, a hot or not, um, hot or not list of tech, uh, which we were going to use to classify the, the ThoughtWorks portfolio and, you know, maybe get some metrics over time, maybe try and help, help us sell the right thing. Um, and that hot technology list really evolved into what you see today as the radar. So the, the, the thing we liked about it was it was kind of um, it was a little bit magic quadranty, so uh, kind of kind of a little bit analysty, uh, which which uh, you know you can you can take it or leave it as as whether you think that's a good thing, but um, it certainly felt like an appealing way of of communicating what was going on in the radar. Um, so that's that's where we came up with the with the radar. I hope most people have seen it. Um, you can get it from thoughtworks.com slash radar, um, and. Uh, one thing about the radar is it's pretty dense. There's quite a lot of stuff on it. Um, it's uh, the how many blips did we have? I think we we had 170 blips on the radar before we culled that down to the current level of about 100, and that's still an awful lot of stuff to wade through. Um, so what I thought we'd do today was pull out some themes uh, from the radar. Uh, and talk about how some of the blips on the radar support those themes. Um, so the the first theme that I'm going to flip to over here um, is one of rejecting heavyweight approaches in favor of simpler, faster, smaller, simpler, smaller, faster techniques and tools. Um, so uh, hopefully my co-presenters here can can see the uh, slide that we've swapped to. Um, uh, Graham, do you want to talk us through a few of the items on this on this slide stuff? Ah, so the uh, heavyweight processes. Yes, that's right. Right. Okay. So I think um, on this theme, I think this is something that's been evolving uh, for quite some time, and. <laughs> As a, an example, I don't think there's any project in the UK that's actually using an application server, particularly in the Java space, where we found that things like Jetty or an embedded servlet container have been far more effective at um, delivering our form of projects, uh, particularly in CD, of being able to rerun things as a process rather than having to deploy something into a configured container. Um, the use of large enterprise systems, we all know, uh, give us deployment problems. They give us problems in configuration, they give us problems in automating the deployment, they give us problems in actually deploying into them in a predictable way. And this theme is based on successes and things that we don't like, where we found that employing, employing sorry, um, smaller, lightweight processes, reducing the dependencies on big uh, things like enterprise service buses, using message buses without smarts as a counterpoint, have been more effective at um, integration and pulling applications together. So, Graham, maybe we should clarify what we mean about message buses without smarts, because we often get that 
that question, um, you, you know, we get a lot of enterprise architects saying, well, you know, our enterprise service bus gives us an awful lot of uh, awful lot of useful things like transactions and, and service choreography and things like that. Um, what's what's the real contrast there when we're talking about um, message buses without smarts? So it's um, the level of programmability within the infrastructure. So direction, routing, and so on are all things that they these this, these sections of middleware are good at. But they can also do a lot more in terms of manipulation of the data in flow or in transit. Um, sophisticated routing mechanisms, transforming, all of those items tend to add thing, add configuration and deployment problems beyond the application. So it becomes more difficult to version control in particular and also to handle multiple versions which you like to do in production. So it's very, it becomes very difficult to upgrade, and you get coupling between each of the um, the start points and end points. And so when you actually come to, hey, I want to deploy a new version of this service or this endpoint, then all of a sudden you get to a point where you have to deploy everything, and you can't do things uh, with multiple versions and in piecemeal. Everything tends to get locked up behind needing to do mammoth changes, typically by hand, uh, within the infrastructure. I think another thing that we'd, uh, we'd call out here is the um, server and application container end of life. Um, so a few years ago, when, um, when memory was at a premium, it made sense to have kind of a Java application server as a shared service that you might deploy multiple apps into, sort of the web sphere and web logics of the world. Um, but these days, now that, um, now that memory isn't a premium, virtualization is on the rise, isolation is a more useful property um, than, uh, than, than manageability via a, a, a big application container. Um, so. We're, we're seeing uh, we're seeing a move away from big application containers, even towards embedding servlet containers, lightweight stuff like Jetty. Um, that kind of hits uh, the microservices topic as well, where you you have um, many small services doing individual um, business operations rather than bulkier services that do a lot of stuff. Uh, and those microservices might have um, they might simply be um, jar files that you, you run like an executable and they boot themselves up and start listening to um, HTTP to, to service um, uh, to service requests. There's kind of a, um, a similar thing outside of the, the Java world. That there's kind of similar stuff going on with, um, I think Heroku just recently published a thing called the 12-factor app or something like that that talks about um, their kind of their way of building uh, building kind of systems out of small uh, processes and uh, not using fancy logging systems and just writing everything to stand it out and, and having the infrastructure take care of that stuff. Um, but it, it's, it seems like that's just, uh, along the same kind of lines, the same kind of theme, even um, you know, Ruby people and um, people that aren't in big enterprise uh, stacks are, are, are doing the same thing of breaking up. Um, for example, Rails apps, like pulling them apart into lots of little processes that talk to each other rather than one big monolithic Rails app. So it's not just uh, not just the Java guys that are doing that, I think. 